The Syracuse football program is a storied one. It consists of a national title, a Heisman winner, five conference championships, and eight pro football Hall of Famers. But times in the Dome are, are quite different now. The Orange haven't won 10 games since 2001, and prior to Saturday's win over number 17 Virginia Tech, Syracuse hadn't beaten a top 25 team since 2012. The emotions of that win carried over to the locker room where first-year head coach Dino Babers gave a post-game speech for the ages. They thought they were going to come in here yeah. and just have an easy game. Yeah. Scene. The man behind that fiery oratory joins us now. Uh, Dino, what were you seeing when you looked out at your players? The uh, things going nuts in that winning locker room Saturday. You know, the thing that I saw was just so much pure emotion, so much pure joy, uh, the excitement in their eyes, the accomplishment in their eyes, and the belief. And uh, when, when those eyes are looking back at you or back at me, it just gets me fired up. And uh, it's, it's, I'm a little embarrassed about <laughs> how this thing's taken off a little bit. But uh, for the young men, for the university, for the community, and for everyone else out there that's never been in a, a, a winning locker room in college football, I'd imagine that that's what it looks like. How has it taken off? I'm sorry, excuse me. How ha you said that you're a little embarrassed about how it's taken off. Tell us how it has taken off. What, what, have, what has been the response in the community and, and around the country? Well, the, you know, with the social media age, and it's been, un it's been unbelievable. You have people at the supermarket and the grocery store and everybody. I've had people text me and tell me they're listening to it as a motivational speech as they go to work or before they, they're, <laughs> they're going to class. It's... It's amazing. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed about it. Dino, you obviously, though, have a flair for the dramatic. Not everyone could give that speech. Where does that come from? You know, that, that's from the heart. I don't, I don't script anything. I don't write anything down. When I, you know, I just, I like to tell people the truth, and I like to talk from the heart. So it's, it's all off the cuff, There's, and I just ad-lib it. Was, it, was that out of the ordinary for a victory speech or was that pretty much what you usually give them? I would say that's a little bit out of the ordinary but the thing that I always try to do is I try to give them the truth. I try to give them something that's going to stick with them on the Sunday, the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, maybe even for life. Something that, that in that moment, that's a precious moment. They're not going to forget that time, that moment and I want to tag something to it that uh, they'll always be able to draw from that hopefully may give them an opportunity to be better fathers, better sons, better husbands. Oh boy, it looked like so much fun in there. The speech was great, the win was even better. What does a victory like that over a ranked team mean for a first year coach? You know what, it's, it's a staple win, there's no doubt about it. And it's really important when you're, when you're taking over a new program and you're changing the way they do things, you're, you're changing the way they dress, you're changing the way they play offense and defense, you're changing their responsibilities of going to the classroom and the responsibilities on and off the football field. And you need something that really brings everybody together that they say, you know what, this guy knows what he's doing, let's follow him. And I think that if this program and win this program, excuse me, win this 
program turns around, I think a lot of people will point back to the win over, Sarah, over Virginia Tech that night in the Dome. Now, you got to travel to B.C. this week. Uh, specifically now, how do you, do, you, do you build off of last weekend without spending too much time thinking about it and try to refocus on B.C.? You know, any time that you, you base your livelihood on what 18 and 22 year olds do during a three to four hour period, it can be difficult. Obviously, they're extremely high. They're going to be complimented the entire week. And that's okay. They accomplished something that was outstanding. But we've got to bring them back down to earth a little bit. We've got to get them to, ready to play a very fine Boston College opponent on their homecoming ga game with the winner of the game probably going to be in a very good situation to have an opportunity to go bowling. Both teams are hungry. Both teams want it. And they're a fine opponent. Okay, so what was your message to your team? How do you, how do you get them refocused? Uh, I talk to them about being consistently good, not occasionally great. Someone that we can wind their clock by. Day in and day out, we need them to be there for us. If we, they can give us that consistent performance, and then we can go out there and play a clean game in probably weather conditions, then we should have a good opportunity to get the win. Dino Babers coming off a signature win against Virginia Tech on Saturday, moving forward against BC this week. Dino, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your speech. Thank you for, for all of it, and, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, David.